a little bit of a confession to make. This episode of Supreme Court Saturday is actually a Court of Appeals Saturday. And I'm releasing it on Sunday, so really, we're just all over the place. Now, conservatives. The case we're going to be talking about today, Campbell v. Clinton, has everything you'll want. A Clinton being accused of breaking the laws, a military invasion of a vague Eastern European nation, and a major US military victory. So this story starts with the Vietnam War, a time when people put more faith in the imaginary goat that started talking after the second hit than the government. Now, it's no surprise that people at that time weren't exactly thrilled to find out that it was easier for the president to bomb a nation than get a free beer at the local bar. This is because, while it's hard to declare war, you need Congress for that. It's easy to just do stuff. In fact, we haven't declared war since World War II, and that one had the war in the name. Well, I guess the Vietnam War, Korean War, Gulf War, Iraq War, and war in Afghanistan, and the war we're talking about later, the Yugoslavian War, yes, the war so unspoken of not even hipsters know about it, all had war in their name too. So anyways, we solved that problem by... The year was 1973. Richard Nixon was president of the United States, and US troops had been fighting in Vietnam for nearly 18 years, all without an official declaration of war. This prompted Congress to pass the War Powers Resolution of 1973, preventing any future president from involving the US in an undeclared war. Well, that worked out just peachy. So what was the War Powers Resolution? Well, I have to tell you, props to 1973's Congress because this thing was a tight three pages, whereas nowadays we need 48 pages to determine whether to incentivize states to switch to paper voting machines or not. Although, maybe if this had a few more pages, we could have avoided the Iraq War. So, alright, what did the War Powers Resolution change? Well, two things, mainly. First, the War Powers Resolution allows the President to send armed forces without congressional approval only if there's attack on American soil or its territories. Otherwise, the military intervention would require congressional approval. Alright, so I need to clarify something, because before this you still needed Congress to vote to declare war. But the President could move troops places, and if the US, not motivated by starting a war, sent troops to maybe North Korea, well, someone's probably going to declare war, but it might not be us. Second, it also forces the President to notify Congress within the first 48 hours of the mission and forbids armed forces from intervening longer than 60 days, with an additional 30 days to withdraw. This might sound airtight, but it's the change that actually had more holes than a Syrian village after an unsanctioned strike. So this brings us to the case at hand, Campbell v. Clinton. Now first, unfortunately there isn't much reporting on this, because apparently the president getting head dominated all of the headlines. Gee, if only there was an allegory for that today. I swear, I've heard so much speculation about Trump's sex life, I'm surprised I haven't seen an anatomically correct hologram in Wolf Blitzer's situation room yet. Anyways, let's get a little background on this case. Because from March to June, NATO forces bombed Yugoslavia. To achieve our aims as an alliance, 19 democratic nations with 780 million people working together in the first sustained military operation in NATO's history. Two days into the bombing and cruise missile campaign on March 26, 1999, Bill Clinton submitted to Congress a report consistent with the War Powers Resolution. You know, just in case they hadn't noticed we started a massive missile and bombing campaign. But this is where things get tricky because upon receipt of the report, Congress voted down a declaration of war 427 to 2, which, alright, not much room for interpretation there. And they voted down authorization of airstrikes 213 to 213, to which Clinton responded by, well, continuing to bomb Yugoslavia. So what did Congress do? Well, they sued. Tom Campbell and 30 other members of Congress took Clinton to court for ignoring them, and this is what happened. 
Unfortunately, despite the fact that this was Congress suing the president for bombing a country which they specifically voted he couldn't do, I could find no audio or video coverage of this case, but instead top videos of Hillary Clinton assassinations from the Gotcha News Network, which really? But hey, the title's in all caps, so you know it's true. An 8 year old high school football tape made it to number 2. Seriously guys, share this video because this set the modern framework for congressional involvement in launching bomb and missile attacks. So because I could find no direct news coverage of this case, I'm going to go largely off of the decision that was released by the Court of Appeals. The main argument was over section 4A1 of the War Powers Resolution which gives Congress power in the absence of a declaration of war in any case in which the United States armed forces are introduced into hostilities or into situations where imminent involvement in hostilities is clearly indicated by the circumstances. Now that sounds pretty clear, but what if you really want to go to war? More importantly, pretty much the entire re resolution relied on section 4A1 to be, well, understood. But leave it to the man who said, It depends upon what the meaning of the word is. Yes. To truly and completely muddle up this resolution. In this case, the question was what does the word hostility mean? Because if you could argue that bombing the crap out of a foreign country wasn't covered by 4A1, well, then bombs away. Because, and I realize I'm about to throw some serious legalese at you. But I'll explain it as we talk through the case. Within 60 calendar days after a report is submitted pursuant to section 4A1, the president shall terminate any use of United States armed forces with respect to which such report was submitted, unless the Congress has declared war or has enacted a specific authorization for such use of United States armed forces, has extended by law such 60 day periods or is physically unable to meet as a result of an armed attack upon the United States. Alright, so basically, if you can prove that you're bombing someone peacefully, then Congress can write all sorts of reports until the pigs fly, but they'll have as much impact as, well, Congress. Alright, so let's dive into the conclusion to see what happened. First, Bill Clinton was arguing that bombing a country wasn't introducing hostilities for the US armed forces. And while I'm sure there wasn't a Mr. Rogers neighborhood explaining the intricacies of when something finally becomes hostile, I feel like most people would assume this is pretty simple. When you start killing people from the sky, it's kinda hard to turn around and play the flower child card. Alright, alright, good point future me editing this video. Still though, how can bombing not be hostile? Well, because Bill Clinton pointed to a House report suggesting that hostilities for the purpose of the War Powers Resolution include all situations where there is a reasonable expectation that American military personnel will be subject to hostile fire. And when you're firing cruise missiles, high altitude bombers, and in future cases, unmanned drones, well, then no US servicemen were hurt in the making of this quagmire. On the other side, you had Congress arguing. The congressman claimed that the president did submit a report sufficient to trigger the War Powers Resolution on March 26th, or in any event, was required to submit a report by that date, but nonetheless failed to end US involvement in the hostilities after 60 days. Yeah, remember how I said Clinton submitted a report to Congress two days after he started bombing Yugoslavia? Well, in Congress's mind, that triggered a 60-day clock at which point the presidency would have to get permission to continue the war. First off, what? Congress, you're like a bad parent. Okay, son, I don't care what you do. Throw rocks at the neighbor's house, bomb Syria, just be back within 60 days and we'll be good. I mean, if Trump's taught us anything, it's that it takes a lot less than 60 days to trigger a war that Congress would probably obl be obliged to keep fighting in. So yet 60 days after a report was filed, Congress had the authority to end a conflict if they didn't like it, but only if that conflict introduced US military personnel to hostility, whatever that means. 
So let's see what they decided. Well, it gets a little confusing because in a surprising twist, somehow three judges overseeing this case came up with four positions. Man, that might be even more positions than Trump takes on any subject over the course of a day. So let's start with Judge Silberman, who wrote the majority opinion. According to The Law Litigating Power with Campbell v. Clinton, an essay that will make you the most interesting person at, well, my cocktail parties. He also said that Congress certainly could have passed the law forbidding the use of US forces in the Yugoslav campaign and that Congress had a broad legislative range of legislative authority it can use to stop a president's war making. The basic point he was making was that Clinton wasn't nullifying their votes against bombing Yugoslavia and against declaring war with Yugoslavia, because they had other ways to stop the conflict by defunding the military, although that would relieve Congress of literally the only thing it seems like they can do, or to invoke impeachment. Which, well, we all know how it happened there with Clinton. Congress did authorize funding for the bombing of Yugoslavia despite being against it, which was argued as consent, although they did say no two times. Next we come to Judge Randolph, who actually looked into the issue of what is hostility. To Randolph, the key issue is whether the legislative actions went into effect, which in this case did not happen. War was not declared. As for the vote on authorizing the hostilities, Clinton never maintained that he needed congressional approval. Yes, according to him, 4A1 never went into effect, because you can beat the heck out of other people as much as you want, and it's only hostility when they take a swing at you. The third judge, Tatel, wrote a dissenting opinion, so again, it doesn't really matter because his beliefs lost. Sorry, but I'm trying to keep my episodes tight. So in the most awkward transition ever, let's talk about Syria, because our president's current position there is... I'm gonna bomb the shit out of them. It's true. I don't care. I don't care. Ha ha ha. And bomb the shit of them we have. We bombed them a year ago after sending a necessitated war powers resolution report to Congress. But when we recently bombed them a second time, there was a potential snag because... It's the second strike against Syria in as many years. The action raises an additional legal complication. The War Powers Act requires the president to terminate any use of United States armed forces after 60 days unless Congress specifically authorizes future action. Because the US did not commit ground troops to the conflict, the White House is treating Friday's strike as a separate conflict that starts over the 60 day clock. 72 Democrats and 16 Republicans led by Tim Kaine are currently saying that Paul Ryan is wrong. I'm going to stand up and have been saying if the president launches missile strikes against Syria without coming to Congress, it's illegal. So, well, if only anyone ever talked about this case, we might not have to endure continued incorrect statements like this every time Trump decides to bomb a nation, which looks like it might be pretty darn often. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hey YouTube, if you want to support independent journalism investigating the Supreme Court, subscribe to our channel for our weekly Supreme Court Saturday episodes. Subscribe now and you can still be in our first 100 subscribers. And as always, leave me a comment below if you have an important case you think I should research. And as always, thank you for watching.